in this progression, we are going to take the ring swing and the kipping ring row, and we are going to combine them to perform the following. A ring swing with hip pop and arm pull. That essentially creates the lift that we want towards the rings. Now, because we're combining two progressions, some of the cues that we're going to talk about today will be something you've heard before, but it's super important that we run through them again and ensure that they translate from the drills we've been working on into this drill if we're going to get the important elements from the drill that we want. So, with that in mind, there are of course also some new areas and we're going to cover them all now. Taking it from the beginning, you want to make sure that you jump up from directly underneath the rings. You want to make sure that you start with a nice big ring swing. So that means lifting your knees as high as you can, kicking your feet out in front of you, and then swinging those feet back. Now, from here, we are going to move forwards into this hollow position. And this is essentially where we fire the cannon. This is where we drive with the hips and we pull with our arms. And before we start talking about that part, what is super important is that we are patient getting to this step. A lot of athletes make the mistake that they think moving from the arch part of your ring swing into this hollow position is going to help them generate lift. And as such, they start to accelerate the feet and swing them forwards. The issue with that is it doesn't help generate any lift. In fact, it only makes it harder for you to then generate the acceleration and the explosiveness from your hips and your arms in the next step. So all of that to say, you need to make sure that you are patient moving your feet forwards. And once you get your feet in front of you and you hit this hollow position, this is when you want to accelerate. You want to be explosive. You want to drive with your hips, pull with your arms so that you end up in this position that you see here. Now, with regard to this position, a few important things to keep in mind. Number one, if we take the arms, this should be a familiar position for you with regard to having practiced the kipping ring row. We want to see the same element, that being you should be pulling your elbows out to the side so that if I was looking from the side, those elbows should be in line with your shoulders. Additionally, we also want to see that the whole body has risen up towards the rings. And a simple way to check that is whether or not your shoulders are above the height of your hips, whether your hips are above the height of your knees and whether your knees are above the height of your feet. We should be in this 45 degree angle. A common mistake that a lot of athletes make is that they try to be explosive with their hips but they don't maintain the tension that is required for that to generate the lift and what that results in is their hip potentially getting quite a lot of height but the rest of the body lagging behind and that is not an optimal position for you to be in if you are looking to then afterwards transition through the rings so although you may feel like you get more height if you drive your hips all the way up to the ceiling it's not going to give you the height that you need, which is your whole body rising up. And with that in mind, again, maintain tension as you drive with your hips and you are looking to see these different joints above each other in the chain. Your hips should not be flying away. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> 